Do you need some cards from today's episode? Well, you can pick them up and support the show from our sponsor, Card Kingdom. Just follow the link in the description box down below. Let's talk about this deck. So this is, I don't even know, Hoggick Dredgevine, I guess. This is the new hotness in modern. And this deck has potential to be really busted. Like I said, I haven't actually played with it yet, but I have played against it and I have seen it do really busted things. So we want to get certain things in our graveyard. Bridge from below, Vegvine, and also Hagik want to be in our graveyard. To get those in our graveyard, we have a couple of different plans. Faithless Looting helps. Uh, Stitcher Supplier helps. Insolent Neonate kind of helps. Not super powerful, but it does get a card in our graveyard. The biggest baddest payoff, though, is Altar of Dementia that lets us sack creatures to mill someone equal to their power. This is kind of the engine of the deck because we have a bunch of these zombies. Uh, Stitcher Supplier, we have Carrion Feeder as a sack outlet. Throw in recursive threats like Gravecrawler and Bloodgast, and we can really mill ourselves a lot. So we self-mill, fill our graveyard, and that's when things get really crazy. We mentioned sack outlets, carry a fire, uh, feeder, and altar of dementia. Well, if you have a bridge from below in the graveyard, or maybe two or three bridge from blows eventually, we're getting a 2-2 zombie whenever one of our creatures dies. So this allows for some really synergistic combos. Like for every black mana we have, we cast Gravecrawler, we sack it to altar of dementia to mill ourselves, or carry and feeder to grow it, get two zombies, three zombies, some big amount of zombies from bridge from below, which is flooding our board with creatures. Eventually, we're going to have a bunch of cards in our graveyard so we can get back Hoggick, and we can either just try to kill our opponent with Hoggick and with Venge Vines, which also come back from the graveyard, or we can kind of mill our opponent out of the game. That is like kind of the backup plan of this deck. So that's kind of the idea of this deck. Mill the opponent out, self-mill to set things up. We can potentially win right away by milling our opponent out of the game, or we can just win with these janky, beatdown, venge vines, hoggy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's basically the deck. Trying to do really crazy things like on turn two, on turn three in modern with Hoggick, and yeah, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how busted this actually is. What's even better than watching a stream highlight? Catching the stream live over at twitch.tv slash mtggoldfish. We fire up the stream Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, along with Tuesday and Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. It's a great time to hang out, show off some deck lists, and most importantly, have a lot of fun. Hope to see you there. Uh, so this hand... Eh. I mean, this seems fine. It's not... This is not an insane hand, but we can turn one Neonate... Turn to uh, discard Vengevine. Turn to Carrion Feeder. Oh, God. Seriously. Seriously about it. Seriously. <laughs> Chancellor of the Addicts, what's going on in modern? Laplano. Well, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for, for our new subscriber. Well, I guess they got us. Uh, okay. Gravecrawler. Boom. You counter it. I mean, we could still do the same thing. We got to do it a little bit awkwardly order-wise, but it's fine. That's fine. Chats are the annex. So our opponent's trying to combo on... I mean, you only play this if you're trying to combo. There's no... There's no fair Chancellor decks in the history of, of Magic. It's Living End? Hmm. Ooh. Stitcher Supplier is sweet. Uh, all right. So play Marsh Flats. Crack Marsh Flats. Yeah, we'll take a Blood Crypt. Untapped. Play Insolent Neonate. Sack Insulin Unite, discard Vengevine. If this is Living End, ooh, Bloodgast, all right, Stitcher Supplier, get back Vengevine. Yes, please. Mill ourselves. Oh, there's a, another Vengevine and a bridge from below. That's good news. Hit our opponent. We have a new donation, our first donation of the day. Interrupter Jones with the $5 donation. Hey, Seth, glad to see Hoggick on stream. I pulled a foil one from a prize pack yesterday. Do I hold it or sell it now? Uh, I would sell, sell, sell a foil Hoggick. I mean, I think it's ridiculously expensive, right? I think, aren't non-foils like $50 now? Opponent, cycles a desert, Ceridon. <laughs> uh, no, non-foils are third. Really? It's only 30? That seems out of whack. Foils are the same price as non-foils. Well, I guess I would hold it for a minute, because non-foils are 30 and foils are listed as 30. I think you can get more for uh, than 30 from a foil. Hey, what's up, Baramet? How are you today? Pwn it. Yep, doing fair things. <laughs> Passing. Sure. 
Uh, Black Leaf Glyphs is a good draw. So we play Black Leaf Glyphs. This is where the deck gets so bonkers. We get to play Carrion Feeder. Carrion Feeder. Sack Stitcher Supplier. Make a zombie. Mill ourselves. Oh, this deck is so insane. Yup. Yup. Another bridge from below. Uh, now we Grave Crawler. Trigger Vengevine. Number two. This is turn three. This is turn three. Yes. Please return to the battlefield. Uh, Grave Crawler. We will sacrifice. We will make two zombies. <laughs> oh, this deck is bonkers. Uh, yep, yep, two zombies. Grow our carrion feeder. Then we will grave crawler. And then, uh, yeah, sure. We will tap a couple of summoning six zombies. I guess we tap all of them since they're summoning sick. Tap all of our summoning six zombies. Tap carrion feeder, also summoning sick. Exile a couple lands and play an 8 8 trample, also on turn three. Uh, now we will attack for eight and we will. <laughs> <laughs> and we will laugh at Living Ed, who so far revealed the Chancellor and cycled a single card. <laughs> All right, opponent cycles the Striped River Winder. The funny thing is, we don't actually really care about Living End. Because if they try to Living End, we just sacrifice our board and our reanimate all of our stuff. So Living End isn't even, like, a threat here. Wow, this deck feels insane! <laughs> this isn't even, like, an absurd draw for the deck. This is, like, probably closer to, like, an average draw, I think. Why do you play interesting decks when I have to work? Oh, I'm sorry, Spawn, spawn Love. Opponent passing. Well, we go to combat. We attack. Yeah, we attack. Electrodominance, sure. Hmm. All right, so now we actually got to think a little. So what do we sack and what do we let die? Venge vines we can let die. We got to sack. So I think we sacrifice... Actually, do we sacrifice anything? Maybe we just let this go. I mean, we get everything back. I guess we want the carrion feeder. We can recast this. These are coming back for free. We can recast Hoggick. Yeah, I think we just sack Carrion Feeder. So, sack Carrion Feeder. Get a couple zombies. We will get a... A few zombies. Just a few. <laughs> yup, yup, yup. Um, replay Hoggick for free by tapping all of our zombies. <laughs> This living guy didn't do anything. I think it helped us. Uh, so there's Hoggick again. We can recast Gravecrawler. Get back our Venge Vines. Uh, sack Gravecrawler. Make some zombies. <laughs> oh, this deck is busted. Uh, and then sack Gravecrawler. Make a few more zombies. This is through a living end. They wrapped our board with living end. And recast Gravecrawler. And pass the turn. All right, opponent. What do you say? <laughs> Goes to combat. Uh, Dex. With everything. Um, so we will just... This is super easy. We will block and block. And opponent scoops it up. <laughs> Okay, and that was just uh, an, an average draw. <laughs> Whew. Black Leaf Cliffs and Gravecrawler. Goo. If we get wrecked by a living end, I'm going to be very sad. We diluted too much in game two. That's possible. Fiery is lit for our opponent. Yes, it's Monday stream day, although apparently... Ugh. Opponent. Shame. Boo and hiss. Play through it, force him to pop it, Torbot script easily. Yeah, I mean, next turn we can, like, attack Stitcher Supplier. Or Stitcher Supplier attack, something like that. And see see if we can maybe force our opponent to to crack the Torbot script and go from there. Could also hit, like, a Faithless Suiting or something. Yeah, I think we gotta try to get him to crack it. Uh, I mean, so far we're one and one with this match. Our first game was insane. Ponent, as for Toll. And, oh, chat, 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 chat.
Oh, they sided out living in. Take out your ley lines, chat said. Yeah, over sideboarded. You don't want ley lines against living and they're not even playing them, chat said. <laughs> chat, shame, shame. <sighs> uh, yeah, we're kind of kind of done for now. Uh, okay, so I mean, we sack them in response, but then they Tormod script and we still lose. Like, all right, so sack, bloodgast, mill ourselves. All right. Well, this kind of works. Do they pop Tormod's crypt? If not, we let it resolve and get back these three. <laughs> no, you're good, chat. I'm just teasing you. JMS, welcome to the fishbowl. Opponent does sack. Thank you for your subscription. Big soups cheer for our new subscriber. Well, now we alter, mill ourselves. Come on, good hits, good hits. Whoo! All right, that's a hoggick. Wow, through the Torba! That better not work. Okay, opponent's just discarding it. Okay. So we get back some cards. We get back a Hoggick. And we hit a bridge. Opponent's passing. And opponent scoops it up! Oh! Silent Gravestone! Our opponent even had the Torba script. And we still beat him! That is the power of Hoggick! Oh, that was impressive. That was, I mean, we did get a bit lucky with our milling, I guess. There was some amount of fortunate milling, but who? Wow. All right. That was impressive. We didn't, we went crazy at game one, but yeah, that gravestone was, uh, that was sweet. All right, chat, I take it back. I'm glad we sided out ley lines. Well, actually, I'm still not sure I'm glad, but okay, this I like. This end looks sweet. This end looks super sweet. We will keep Hagek. Uh, I guess we keep that too. So Hagek on top, Blood Crypt, untapped, Stitcher Supplier, Mill Hagek. This feels like it might be a turn two Hagek hand. Ugh, Carrion Feeder. All right, pass the turn. Well, getting closer, getting closer. Uh, vote it. Oh boy, another Stitcher Supplier. I like that as well. Stitcher Supplier, Mills. <laughs> okay okay good hand good hand <laughs> um blood crypt untapped now we one actually no i think we can be greedier let's play neonate trigger vengevine opponent cracks they're trying to keep our hoggig off the battlefield Breeding pool, untapped, sure. <laughs> opt, opt, our opponent's playing some good, clean magic. So we will get back a Vegvine, Neone, sack it, discard Faithless Looting, make a zombie. Then we Hoggick, tap, tap, eh, five. Go to combat, attack. And that's turn two. Turn two, ladies and gentlemen. Hit our opponent down to 12 past the turn. Not bad. Not bad on turn two. 8, 12, 13, 14, 16 power. Some of it hasty. Uh, do you have a fog opponent? <laughs> this deck is so bonkers. Uh, Faithless looting. Discard Vengevine. Discard Marsh Flats. Eh, go to combat. I guess we're just going to... I mean, what do you got? Do you actually have a way out of this? Go attacking. Opponent. Dead? <laughs> I almost feel bad. I almost feel bad for the people we're playing against. Our opponent's just playing some good, clean magic. They want to see if the new snow lands make snow a thing in modern. And we're just like, turn two, 16 power. <laughs> wow, this deck's busted. I mean, last game we beat Graveyard Hate. We, we were beating Graveyard Hate. This deck is just, Lord. Whew. The power. Boy, I could get addicted to this. This is probably going to be what we stream for the next month, every stream. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. We're going to play a bunch of different decks, but wow, it, feel, it feels good. Sometimes it feels good to be on the degenerate side of things. 
Uh, roll stop two to one with the five dollar donation. Seth, the spice of this deck is too high. This is my favorite card out of Butter Rises. Happy to see it good. Also, your beard is my inspiration. Well, roll stop. Thank you so much for the donation and the beard compliment. I think me and Vince, uh, Pleasant Kenobi, we're gonna have a, a boxing match to settle the beard debate once and for all. All right, so we go to combat. Attack. Yep, go attacking. Mystical teachings. Hmm. <clears throat> they could have darkness, I guess. All right. I mean, I guess that resolves. Crypt incursion. Opponent cast crypt incursion. Gonna gain a bunch of life. Up to 40. Oh, uh, they will not die. They just won't die. We can't build up because they have Nexus. HWD, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Hit our opponent to 20. I guess we can mill them to just Nexus in their deck and hope that they don't have like Blue Sun Zenith in hand. So yeah, I mean, that's the plan. Sack Grave Crawler. Make zombies. Mill our opponent. Play Grave Crawler. Sack Grave Crawler. Zombies. Mill our opponent. Play Grave Crawler. Sack Grave Crawler. Zombies. Mill our opponent. Play Grave Crawler. Sack Grave Crawler. Zombies. Mill our opponent. Grave Crawler. Sack it. Mill. Make zombies. Grave Crawler. Sack a zombie. Mill our opponent. Sack a zombie. Mill our opponent. Oh, and they scoop it up. That's enough. That's enough. They cannot win with just a Nexus in their deck. And okay, Pona had so much hate and the deck just doesn't care. It doesn't care. It just doesn't care. Wow, this deck is strong. And remember, this is, I had never played this deck. I'd seen people play it, but I'd never played it. So we're not even like playing it. I'm sure like as good as it could be played. And we're playing through a ton of hate, and it's still just stomping people. Oh, boy. All right. Tron. Well, this will be interesting. I actually don't know how the Tron matchup is for this deck. Well, that's good. Faithless Looting. Yeah, I don't know about Tron. Tron might be bad. That is Faithless Looting off the top. Ooh. Hmm. That was a very good draw. So we can discard two Blood Gas. We can discard one blood gas and bridge from below. We do want bridge from below in the graveyard. All right, we'll go bridge blood gas. Then we'll godless shrine untapped. Get back a blood gas. Carrion feeder. Go attacking. Hit our opponent. I mean, I guess we're just in race mode. I feel like we can beat a Karn potentially. We can't probably beat an Ugin. There's Urza's Mine. Opponent. I'm gonna pass. Sure. Hoggick. Hmm. Well, play Marsh Flats. Crack Marsh Flats. Grab a Swamp. Looting. Discard Bridge. Discard Hoggick. Go to combat. Attack. Opponent takes the beats. One, two, three, four. So we can sack Gravecrawler, get two zombies. We can sack Bloodgast, get two zombies. And then we can Hoggick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now we pass the turn. I mean, Karn doesn't beat us here. I think our opponent's... Our opponent needs... I guess a Wrath gives them a shot. They need to have Oblivion Stone. I think that's the only thing. They need a Tron Oblivion Stone. All right, there's Tron. Opponent. Thought not Seer. That doesn't do it. That's like the least scary thing our opponent could have played. Necrotic Wound and Bloodgast are the options. This should be game, right? What's the... Oh, matter reshaper. Oh, so now we got to do... Now we got to do math. All right, so... Opponent can block... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So if they block here, they take... Sit, they take 2, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They're dead. If our opponent blocks here and here, eight. So our opponent's just dead, I guess. I don't think I'm missing anything. I think we just, I'm pretty sure this is just lethal. Block, 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 block. They take four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, if they block here and block here. They would take four off Hoggick, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Do we have to sack the carrion feeder to itself? I think we just gotta sack feeder to itself, and then it's lethal. That's what we were trying to count. So ta yeah, sack carrion feeder to itself. Get two get two zombies. And then this should give us lethal no matter how our opponent blocks. Untap. Blood crypt. Sure. Uh yeah. Go to combat attack. This should be lethal. Uh, opponent. Uh, the problem is, if we didn't sack the Carrion Feeder, they block Hoggick with Thought Knot. They block Carrion Feeder with Matter Reshaper, and they live. And then who knows? Maybe they draw all his dust or something like that, and then we're dead. I don't think it was lethal unless we sack the Carrion Feeder. I'm pretty sure it was not. I think we were one point of damage short. Because they take four from Hoggack, and then they take two, four, six... Uh, six for eight from the zombies if they blocked everything. So we were one damage short unless we sat carried feeder to itself. This is, I mean, Pony could have graveyard hate, but minus graveyard hate, this hand can potentially be. All right, that's graveyard hate. Well, a pox on you, opponent. Ugh. Surgical on bridge. Well, opponent's got a variety of graveyard hate, apparently. Well, that's annoying. We were actually hoping for that to, uh, to be good. Oh, we can't win without bridge from below. So I think what we do, go to combat, get in with Bloodgast, hit our opponent, play Hogak. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Leave Faithless Looting. Play Altar of Dementia. Pass the turn, and all right, opponent, pressure's on. What do you got? Do they luck into Tron? No, Eldrazi Temple. Okay. So f four mana for Eldrazi. They could have, like, Thought Knots here, but we got a board of beating down stuff. Phone it. Walking Blizzda. Sure. That's fine. We have 8-8 eight, eight Trample. Opponent passes. We draw Marsh Flats. I'll go to combat. Attack our opponent. Uh, opponent blocks a zombie. Hangs. So we will sack blood gas, mill ourselves. Hit our opponent. Marsh flats. Get back blood gas. Shenanigans. Chalice of the Void. And pass the turn. Opponent needs something pretty spectacular. Or we're going to 3 0. Oh, we got the GG's. And wow. Okay. This deck is killing it. Okay. We might be we might be doing pretty well with this deck. This deck might just be busted. Well, the kids are already eating. Three rounds in. We have not lost a match. If Seth is 3-0 with it, it's bannable. <laughs> I like the way you think, Frozen Cave Bad Lawyer. That's the standard. If I ever 5-0 with a list, I message wizards. You gotta ban it. I should not be able to 5-0 with that, wizards. Ban it. Ban it. <laughs> well, okay. This is... This hand is busted. This seems very good. Turn one, Neonate, discard bridge. Turn two, see what we draw, but we have our altar of dementia. Yeah, I mean, this seems like a good hand of magic cards. Neonate go. Uh, opponent, what are you up to? I'm surprised we haven't run into the mirror yet. I thought everyone was playing this deck. This is Graveyard Summer. Graveyard strategies are getting banned, just like Combo got banned after Combo Winner. <sighs> Seems possible. I mean, they already banned a while ago, but they already banned uh, Golgari Grave Troll from Dredge. Ooh, Mishra's Bobble. Going to do some cycling opponent. It would be sad if they, we lost our Altar of Dementia. That's a card that we don't want to lose to discard. Ooh, Prismatic Vista. Well, it's not Death Shadow. No one's... Oh, it's a snow deck! Oh, that is sweet. We have not seen a snow deck yet. So opponent's passing. Well, we neonate. We discard bridge from below. 
We make a zombie. We draw Stitcher's Supplier. Also good. Opponent draws a card. Altar of Dementia. Well, play a land. Play Stitcher's Supplier. Mill ourselves. Play Grave Crawler. One, two, ugh. Yeah, I guess we gotta wait till next turn. Next turn we can get down Altar of Dementia and really start to go crazy, hopefully. And we have Resilience to discard with two altars. Maybe our opponent's trying to combo. Plays a Planes. It, oh, opponent's also trying to combo. It's a race. It's a combo race. Can we beat our opponent? Mox Opal. Oh, boy. Okay. Chromatic Star. Opponent. Passes. We draw. Hogak. Well. Uh, play Altar of Dementia. Well, sacrifice Stitcher Supplier. Mill ourselves. Unfortunately, we have a bridge in hand. Looting, looting. Land. Whoa! Oh, opponent scoops it up? I don't think we were guaranteed to win there. With just one bridge from below, I don't think we were guaranteed to win. Not at all. All right, well, uh, we got there. And let's see if we're dead. Let's see if Urza has our number here. It might. It definitely could. Opponent, untaps. Yeah, we have beaten Tormod's Crypts in previous games. So it's not just unbeatable. It is a good hate card. Astrolab. Yep. Draws a card. And Astrolab draws a card. Yeah, Urza's looking pretty bonkers. They get to keep tapping Grinding Station for mana. That does kind of seem like KCI. Maybe better KCI. Uh, I'm not sure what their win con is. Um, making infinite mana seems possible. It's kind of like the KCI decks from what we can see. They have Thopter Foundry Sword of the Meek as a win con. If they can find a Thopter Foundry and Sword of the Meek... They get to play their entire deck with Urza. Infinite mana, infinite everything. <laughs> Can we piece this together? One, two, three, four. Ugh. I guess we gotta... Hmm. Maybe we gotta cast another Gravecrawler first. Cast Gravecrawler. Cast Gravecrawler. Get the Venge Vines. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I guess we Hoggick? And now we could start... There's Hoggick. Sack Vengevide, mill ourselves. We need bridge. Okay, there's one bridge. Sack Vengevide, mill ourselves. Make a zombie. Oh, another Hoggick. Okay, so... Cast Hoggick. With Hoggick on the stack, Sack Hoggick to mill ourselves. All right. Opponent cashes in... To get rid of a bridge. Well, we need to hit more bridges. We only had one going. No bridges. Uh, sack the zombie to mill ourselves. We need bridges. We need bridges. No bridge. Sack carrion feeder to mill ourselves. No bridge. Grave crawler. Grave crawler. Wow. Oh, oh, oh my goodness, that is unfortunate. Yeah, and that, that is game. Well, apparently all of our bridges were at the very bottom of our deck. Hoggicks are only, but we can't recast Hoggick. That's the problem. That is the issue, is we can't recast Hoggick. You need two untapped black creatures. If you sack Hoggick, then we have less untapped black creatures. So if we sack Hoggick, then we still can't make untapped black creatures. I guess we could... Uh, I guess we have to sack Hoggick to hit two... We have to hit multiple bridges? Ugh. All right. Maybe this could still work. We did hit our bridges, finally. So sack Gravecrawler. Make three zombies. Is this going to be enough... So we make zombies. We can cast Hoggick. Oh my god. All right. Maybe we're still good. We might still be good. Exile stuff. 
Oh, we still got there. Oh, our deck gave us a bit of a start because all of our bridges, one, two, three, were in our bottom eight cards. But uh, Hagek, the combo, still gets there. And uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, 5 would be sweet. And it's it's possible. It does seem possible. We will keep. Blood Grip to the bottom. Um, Black Leaf Cliffs and Gravecrawler. You. See what our opponent's up to. See if we can close it off with the 5-0. Opponent. What do you got? Swamp. Snow-covered swamp. Oh, okay. Man, everyone's on these Astrolabs. I've never seen so many Astrolabs. What card do you think is more important in the shell, Bridge, Hagek, or Dementia? I think Hagek is the least important of the three. I mean, they all work really well together, which is part of what makes the deck so good. But I would say, I would say that Bridge and Alter rank ahead uh, of Hagek. Um, well, Bloodstained Mire, crack it. Blood Crypt, untapped, Neonate, Neonate, and pass the turn. <laughs> uh, okay, sure. You can thought seize our Hoggick. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that's a good one about it. Thank you. <laughs> Craig's Vern Catacombs. Gonna play Pauper anytime soon. I'm sure we'll play some Pauper soon. I recorded a Legacy League that'll be going up. Uh, Pauper are... I'm sure we'll have a playing Popper at some point. We don't really play Popper on stream, at least uh, consistently. All right, Fatal Pushes. That's kind of annoying. Come on, Zombie. That works. Oh, that really works. That was our best draw. Stitcher Supplier. Mill ourselves. <laughs> oh, opponent. Uh, yeah, Gravecrawler. Double Vengevine. Yes, please. Oh my god, that was absurd. Wow! Oh, they had us too! That Stitcher Supplier Mill! Bridge Vegvine Vegvine! <laughs> okay, game. Game on turn three. Uh, yeah, we would have got in from Milia, Kesta Hagek, and yeah. Okay. The deck is busted! It is busted! It is not even a little bit fair. Alright, opponent Surgical Spritch. Well, so the bridge plan is officially off the table. Opponents down to 14. They probably have Snapcaster Surgical, though, and we're just not going to have any good cards le uh, left. Wow, this deck is the most ambitious thing I've ever seen. Okay, our opponent is... I don't know what our opponent's doing. This is... They're going to get Tormod Script, aren't they? We're going we're gonna to lose to this. And Snaring Bridge. Okay. Well, go to combat. Attack Karn. Opponent blocks. Well, let's Faithless Looting. Discard, discard. Stitcher Supplier. Mill. Grave Crawler. Pass the turn. Oh, we're going to get Karn locked, aren't we? They're going to get down the bridge and Karn lock us. This is some next level jank. Yeah, I think we're just super dead, honestly. Yeah. All right. Well, we're locked. Pass the turn. Yeah, Karn, I mean, th it's decks like this that make me think Karn should be banned. If Karn is just the best thing to do in your janky snow midrange deck, your green red ramp deck, your Tron deck, basically, if you are any deck that casts things more than like three mana, if Karn is the best thing you should do, that's it's a horrible card for the game of Magic. And I feel like we're getting pretty close to that being like the truth of Karn. Opponent passes. We draw. Yeah, there's a liquid metal coating. We draw land. All right. On to game three. Well, this is some next level jank. This is like fifth level jank. I don't know if I've ever seen j any jank that's been this janky before. Five color, all basic land, snow carn. My mind is blown. It is blown. We get to play first. Let's see if we get a 5-0 against this jank. Ugh. Hmm. Okay. I guess we're keeping. Uh, I think we have to neonate. If we get thought seized, we get thought seized. Like, getting down Silent Gravestone to deal with Surgical is nice, but I think we have to start executing our game plan. 
for snow covered forest and astrolab all right opponent good at getting that draw and opponent passing we draw vengevine boy if we hit a land here this could be well uh, maybe we just gotta wait a turn Ugh. so get it with insulin neonate hit our opponent down to 19 play silent gravestone neonate discard vengevine Blood Crypt, and Grave Crawler. All right, pass the turn. Opponent, passing. Silent Gravestone, maybe saving our day. We draw Looting. Oh, Looting would be so greedy. We're not going to be greedy. We're going to play Carrion Feeder, play Neonate, get back Vengevine, go to combat, attack, opponent. Down to 13. Pass the turn. Okay, the pressure's on. Vengevine. Coming back. Combat. Hit our opponent. Down to 8. Can we finish off the 5-0? Opponent's down to 8. We pass the turn. Can we do it? Can we do it? Can we do it? Should have kept Alter. I don't think playing Alter is better than, better than getting Vengevine going, is it? Oh, my God. That's absurd. Okay. Zombie? New. Well, that's disappointing. Discard, discard. Pass the turn. Wow, opponent with the sweepers for days. Opponent. Alter's good, but you gotta you also have to think situationally. Like, can we really just not have any creatures? We would have had a completely empty board and played Alter. And we would not have had any way to play another creature. So they're Without having a zombie, like, our entire deck just doesn't do anything. That's ridiculous. That's re- <sighs> Seriously. Uh, modern is the worst. Ugh. Wow. And that is how it ends. I mean, I guess we can top deck a zombie. Oh, my God. All right. Well, it looks like we're ending with a 4-1. Uh, I don't know if I've ever been this frustrated. All right, go ahead, and that is the game. Karn gets the lock, and... We are going to have to settle for a disappointing, very disappointing... Uh, oh, very disappointing 4-1. So the deck is busted. Wow, was that some jank? Oh, my lord almighty. I mean, the good news is, or bad news, I guess, depending on how you feel about broken decks, uh, is this deck is very strong. I'm a little sad we didn't get the 5-0, mostly with how it happened. If we got janked by, by a deck that seemed, like, reasonable to be whatever then i would feel a little less bad but getting janked by uh by five color snow card is a uh, is something i really hope they ban a karn piece karn karner lad is like i mean snow's not reasonable i think the snow is was probably horrible but karn is good <laughs> i mean that's too harsh not that snow is horrible i am excited to give snow a shot but we didn't see Snow do anything. I guess they scredded, which is maybe like a fatal push. But I feel like it's just Karn. Like you, it's kind of like you can play any horrible thing, and if you ramp into Karn, then uh, then you can have success with it. <laughs> so I like Snow. I just think Karn is not an especially healthy card. They have the Black Snow Wrath. That's true. I mean, yeah. I guess it's like. Anger of the Gods or Damnation or something. The Sweeper is good. No, I'm not claiming that Karn should be banned because of this game. But if you look at, like, I think we're getting to the point where Karn is just uh, clearly the best thing you can ramp into for any deck. Like, that was just a random mid-range deck that's playing Karn. We've seen Tron decks playing Karn. We've seen, like, Ponza-style decks. They play Karn because if you can get to four mana and six mana, then, uh, then Karn is just the best thing you can do 
in every deck of any color combination. So it's for me, I think I use this comparison on the podcast, which is going to be going up shortly. Uh, it's kind of it reminds me of like Emrakul or something where Emrakul is just so much better than anything else you can like through the breach or reanimate. It doesn't even cross your mind to play anything else because it's just objectively wrong, like Emrakul and Grizzlebrad. I feel like we're getting to that point with Karn where it's just like it's objectively wrong to do anything except this because it's so much better than anything else. Yeah, I mean, you could just ban Lattice. That would definitely be helpful, but is Karn more broken than Hoggick? Uh, I think it's on a similar watch list, and the I think the main difference is, I think the thing that makes me scared of Karn is it literally just shows up in every deck. You have, like, almost aggro decks playing it, you have control decks, you have ramp decks, you have whatever our opponent was playing, mid-range decks. Hagek is very good in one, like, very specific narrow archetype. Karn just show, can show up in any deck of uh, of any, any color combination in almost any style. It's a little bit awkward and uh, straightforward aggro, but if you're any deck that has a reasonable expectation of getting to six mana... Karn would probably be insane in Elves. I don't know if people have actually played it. Yeah, Prison decks. I don't know if Karn itself is the card that should be banned, but Lattice potentially should... And saying it should be banned might be too strong, but it should be on the watch list. I think, like, Karn should definitely be there. Hoggett could get itself... This deck could get itself there because it was super busted. Like, uh, sadly, we finished with a 4-1 instead of a 5-0, but the deck was insane, and it was super resilient. We were able to overcome a lot of graveyard hate. The only reason we didn't 5-0 is our opponent had, like, a very crazy hand with multiple Wraths and uh, just had just the exact perfect hand for the matchup. So, yeah, the deck is uh, the deck is super insane, for sure. Let's open our treasure chest now that we got our league. We did finish with the 4-1. We got five treasures, so let's see what we get in our five treasure chests. Ooh, Liliana's promo Liliana's Triumph. Huh, why is that? I wonder if that's worth anything. Why is that in a treasure chest? I thought those were in the... I thought those were in those, like, promo pack things. Interesting. Uh, I guess it's worth, like, 50 cents. Pack of the Titan. We played that hilarious pack deck a couple weeks ago. <laughs> pack of the Titan, Angel's Grace, not deck. Not worth anything, but, eh, free spells. Gotta look out for those free spells. They're always busted. Uh, Lord of Shatter Skull Pass. Oh, not super good. 25 play points. That's nice, like, 250 in play points. Man, uh, they really cut back on the treasure chest you win, don't you? Four and one for five treasure chests feels light. Triskel, uh, Triskelvius. Oh my god. Triskelvius. Let's go with that. 25 play points, adding to the play point pile. Yeah, force and negation's ridiculous on Moto right now. Uh, ooh, Gisela. Gisela's a sweet card. I don't think it's worth anything, because it's not really playable outside of Commander, but it is a sweet card. An Eerie Interlude we've had some fun with. All right, last one. Let's get something good. Let's get something good. One more treasure chest. Ooh, Mesmeric Orb. Mill staple Mesmeric Orb. Uh, not as powerful as a two-mana Miller as Alter Dementia, though. Well, and now I guess we, I guess we gotta grab a couple more chests, thanks to a donation from QD1. So, I guess we gotta snag a few more... A few more treasure chests, thanks to our very kind donator. So, yeah. So the deck was insane. If you're looking for something really busted and powerful... Um, oh, awesome! Uh, demonic. I will, I will have to uh, check it out. If you're looking for something really busted and powerful and modern that maybe has some outside concern, uh, concerns about its future, depending on how things shake out with future Pro Tours and whatnot... Um, I would, I would, uh, give the deck a shot. I would not be the least bit surprised if we see this deck, uh, I don't know when the next modern paper tournament is, but I think this is a deck that people are going to be playing heavily and is going to be posting finishes. The main thing is the deck is resilient and it does things that other similar graveyard decks don't do the same way. Uh, we were able to win through graveyard hate. The combo kills allows it to win without attacking. So there is a lot of reasons that this is better and faster than graveyard decks from the past. So, I mean, that's definitely a concern is I, but I mean, you can't really, Ooh, 
Elspeth Terrell and Languish. Languish, I actually do think that Dead of Winter is a really good card. I think I think it is a card that's worth splashing, playing Snowlands and like putting in your sideboard. If you have like five or six Snowlands that you can fetch out, I actually think Dead of Winter is busted. Uh, not busted, but it's very good and very playable. And I think that's the most common way you see snow, uh, snow stuff. All right, three more. We get Release the Gremlins, Original Squee, the All Red... The all red treasure chest. We have not had much luck with these chests. Come on, let's get a ooh mystical tutor in peat bog. Peat bog. Why are we opening peat bogs? Why is that? <laughs> Why is that in our treasure chest? Peat bog. Oh, I guess it's actually worth a dollar eighty-five. What plays peat bog? Oh, mono black and pauper. Apparently, I did not know mono black pauper played peat bog. Uh, apparently, it does though. And mystical tutor from Eternal Masters. 78 sets. Well, last one. Last treasure chest. Crack it open and Narset. Japanese Narset. Oh, they have, des <laughs> they have destinies. Got to pump those legends. Pulmonic Sliver. Probably going to spike in paper because all slivers spike in paper, apparently. And some play points. Oh, God. Anyway, everyone. I think that brings us to the end of our Monday afternoon first Modern Horizon stream. So reminders on the way out the door, replay YouTube. That's where you can find all the old streams, including this one in the future. Normal YouTube, Budget Magic is standard tonight. It's a sweet deck though. So uh, if you like tribal decks, check it out in standard. Starting on Wednesday with Against the Odds, lots of Modern Horizon stuff coming up. Uh, one more reminder that the sponsor of our stream today is Card Kingdom. So if you're looking Looking for some sweet new Modern Horizons cards, you can grab them over at CardKingdom.com. Maybe you can even get some free stickers if you pick up some sealed Modern Horizon products. So thank you to them for supporting the stream. Most importantly, thank you to all of you. You are amazing. It was a ton of fun today, living the 5-0 dream, almost, checking out some broken new stuff in Modern. So I love you all, everyone. Have a wonderful Monday evening. I will see you tomorrow, uh, 25 hours from now or something. So I'll see you tomorrow for the stream. Until then, have a great night. Seriously, I love you, and I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.